Uh, hi student, uh, so um, um, uh, today I am going to talk about another lecture which is about assessment and management of patients with hypertension. So uh, in this lecture we will uh, talk about the assessment and uh, nursing management of patients with hypertension. Uh, this lecture uh, uh, in chapter 31. So we will start uh, our lecture with the definition of the hypertension. So in this lecture, and uh, you have to know uh, the definition of the hypertension according to the National Committee in Prevention, Detection, Evaluation, and Treatment of Blood Pressure. So this is one of the organization. Uh, they define the hypertension about you know systolic uh, blood pressure, systolic pressure greater than 140 and diastolic pressure greater than 90. So for example, you have to know that you know uh, this reading should be you know uh, average of two or more accurate blood pressure measurement taken during two or more contact with the healthcare provider. So we can't depend on one reading and it should be more than two reading and also uh, if the patient have more than two readings uh, accurate blood pressures measurement which was more than 140 over 90 we consider patient as hypertensive patient. So uh, you have to know the classification of the blood pressure for the adult age 18 and older. So this is we, we uh, the same organization they classify of, uh, for blood pressure you know uh, as normal pre-hypertension, stage 1 hypertension or stage 2 hypertension. So and normal blood pressure, as we said, it is lower than 120, uh, and uh, less the diastolic should be lower than 80. Uh, and the prehypertension uh, should be, uh, you know, uh, the prehypertension the patient may have risk to get hypertension of the systolic between 120 to 139, or systolic blood pressure between 80 to 90 to 89. However, if patient have, you know, we consider the patient as stage one hypertension or stage two hypertension you should uh, as a nurse you should be able to classify hypertension and you should be able to know if patient in stage 1 hypertension or in stage 2 hypertension for example if patient in stage 1 hypertension his blood pressure between 140 to 159 over 90 to 99 but if patient his blood pressure over one uh, more than 160 and uh, you know diastolic is more than 100 he will be classified as 2 hypertension so we will go to the next slide. The next slide also talk about the incidence and prevalence of the hypertension. So for example, you know, the silent, you know, the hypertension is considered the silent killer because normally the hypertension does not cause any symptoms at uh, and the end is, uh, and the later, you know, uh, stage, the, the uh, you know, when, the, when you diagnose the hypertension, you will find the patient may have, you know, organ damage. So in this case, according to the World Health Organization, it is the second leading cause of death at around more than uh, 14 uh, after coronary artery disease so uh, you know uh, and also in Oman we have a lot of patients who have hypertension so it's very important as the nurse to know the pathophysiology to know the nursing management and the health education to take care of these patient and to reduce you know uh, you know the complication of the hypertension among to these patient so for example we have you know uh, it's considered the third death uh, you know, due to the hypertension. And according to the Ministry of Health in Oman, we have the leading causes of the inpatient morbidity in female over 45 and the second in male. So it is one of the causes of the patient having, you know, inpatient morbidity. They are, the patient have complication and inmorbidity going to the hospital for treatment because of the hypertension. So we have two types of the hypertension. So as a nurse, you should able to identify these type as the, of the hypertension. So we have a primary hypertension and we have secondary hypertension. In a primary hypertension, it is called accessional hypertension also. And there will be having a high blood pressure from an identified cause. We don't know the cause. But in the secondary hypertension, we the cause is identified. So we have high blood pressure because of the, for example, the patient 
have high blood pressure because of the renal disease or the certain medication. For example, the patient is taking certain medication and has high blood pressure, or the patient is taking, you know, for example, you know, have you know uh, kidney you know failure, and the patient because of the kidney failure develop hypovolemia and develop hypertension. So some of these you have to know. For example, if you you know if, you, if they will ask you patient with the renal disease and develop hypertension, it is could it is con considered secondary hypertension. And here you have you will have a, a pre, uh, in the previous lecture we spoke uh, we spoke about you know I spoke in the previous lecture about you know the you know uh, cardiovascular assessment and in the cardiovascular assessment we spoke about also the you know the pathophysiology of the hypertension you can go to this YouTube link and you will find some of the information. However, you know the blood pressure is about multi, uh, the cardiac output multiplied by the peripheral resistant. So. For example, I already explained before, if we reduce the peripheral resistance, for example, we'll be able to reduce the hypertension. So increase the cardiac output and increase peripheral resistance, you know, peripheral, uh, peripheral resistance could, uh, can lead to uh, uh, hypertension. So as the nurse, you have to know that you know hypertension is the major risk factor leading to the vascular, uh, cardiovascular problem. You have to know the patient will develop heart failures or will develop cardiovascular problem normally sometimes because of the un uh, uncontrolled hypertension. So uh, in addition to the hypertension, you have to know <clears throat> there are some factors that could you know uh, you know increase the risk of patient getting hypertension like smoking, like obesity, BMI more greater than thirty physical and activity uh, dyslipidemia uh, and patient die having having high you know cholesterol level having patient having diabetes and global filtration rate less than 60 and patient you know uh, uh, older patient and family history all of these information is very important to identify if the uh, if this assessment is very important because people with these fac risk factors are you know they are higher risk to get the hypertension However, you have to know sometimes, you know, the hypertension usually no symptoms rather than elevated blood pressure. And this is what we, we called it, you know, previously, you know, the uh, uh, silent killer because it's silent hypertension. However, you have to understand that sometimes, I, I explain uh, uh, just now that the hypertension we will have you know we will you know symptoms seen related to the organ damage are seen late and are serious for example the patient will have uncontrolled hypertension and for example after one year maybe patient develop some you know organ damage like you know for example stroke cardiac hyperatrophy myocardial infarction renal damage and for example you know eye changes like retinal uh, you know and uh, retinopathy or whatever you know some uh, eye problem so these organ damage which will be seen at late and it is it's very important to know like you know heart failures hyper uh, cardiac issues whatever stroke and uh, you know MI or renal you know damage all of these consider as or, or organ damage that is you know as a result of the uncontrolled hypertension so now we will go to move. Uh, now uh, we will go to move uh, either to the assessment of the patient with the hypertension. So the nursing assessment of the patient with hypertension is very important. This is the case scenario. You can go, uh, you know, you can read uh, this scenario, and you from this scenario you can identify some of the risk factor. You can identify some of the assessment, some of the diagnostic, uh, and some of the you know that we use to identify the hypertension. So, for example, you can identify the history, you can identify the diagnostic, you can identify the physical examination from this scenario. So, here we go to that. This is the, for example, you have, as I explained before, this is we explained before, there, that patient with hypertension, there are some risk factors that patients sometimes, you have to know that you have to differentiate between the risk factor and between organ damage. So, the, the risk factor is, is the, hyper, the risk factor for the hypertension, as I explained. It is a smoking, obesity, physical and activity, dyslipidemia, diabetes, you know, uh, as we said before. And however, the uh, organ damage, we mentioned it before, the organ damage, it is manifestation, which is, uh, we, we, see, we, we see these, uh, you know, um, uh, these, uh, uh, you know, organ damage or manifestation at the end, like, you know, retinal and eye, and eye problems or changes or renal damage, myocardial infarction, heart failure, stroke and 
and uh, you know whatever heart disease so for example here this is some of the you know when as a nurse you have you should be able to you know uh, to uh, to take the assessment from the patient and uh, you know uh, write appropriate assessment uh, of the patient for example you have to take the history you have to take physical examination and diagnostic in the history you have to take as i mentioned you have to take if the patient is smoking physical inactivity and you has diabetes you know a family history this is very important information because of this information you you will be able to identify the risk factor why patient develop hypertension and physical examination you will be able to know if the patient is obese if the patient is you know and then also we if the patient have organ damage like you know written an examination we we, we, will, we will know from the vital sign and also we, we conduct some diagnostic tests to identify the organ damage and to identify sometimes we do ACG to identify any cardiac changes to echo also to identify any cardiac changes and blood chemistry to identify any renal changes sometimes you know electrolytes sometimes renal function test and urinary analysis to identify also the renal function so now we'll go to the medical management of the patient with hypertension it is very important to understand the medical management of patient with hypertension may in future you will work in the local health center or maybe you will work in the you know uh, you will work in the uh, you know uh, in the medical ward and you will receive the patient you know init with initial diagnosis of hypertension so it's very important to know the medical management of the patient when you receive this patient with initial diagnosis with the hypertension so the our goal is to prevent complication through blood pressure control. We we can't you know we can't uh, you know cure the patient from the hypertension. But what we can do, we can control the blood pressure with the certain measurement and we prevent the complication. So for example, our first line, you know, we can prevent hypertension through lifestyle modification. This is the first line. So what we ask the patient, we ask the patient to reduce the weight because normally the research, uh, you know, the research indicated that patient, you know, if you reduce the weight, sometimes you will have, the blood pressure will reduce. And also we use, according, you know, the, uh, we use, a dietary approach to stop hypertension this is Dutch diet you have to you know you have to go back to the book and uh, the table 31 and page 8, 8, 6, uh, 66 and read about dash diet so and we have to reduce that you know sodium intake this is one of the you know one of the important you know uh, nursing uh, one of the important teaching uh, you know step for the patient that to ask the patient to follow the dash diet and ask the patient to follow you know and to do Increase the intake of the potassium of the sodium. So also uh, dietary sodium re uh, reduction that I said and physical activity will ask the patient to do some physical activity because the research you know uh, showed that high blood pressure significantly reduced with the you know exercise and uh, also what you have to know is uh, that moderate alcohol intake. So we can't ask the patient to stop alcohol intake as maybe they will have alcohol with withdrawal symptoms or whatever. But you know the we ask the patient to have moderate alcohol consumptions like you know more, not more than one uh, you know cup beer you know beer uh, beer day so this is one of the things you have to understand so approach to take to stop hypertension you will find these in the approach to stop hypertension in the book you will find how much you, the patient should take from sodium how much the patient should take from alcohol and how much the patient take from different diet for, from different you know diet for example here from fruit and vegetables from you know from bread from meat fish and uh, you know from uh, other you know like you know from milk so for example from meat fish and alternative you will know that patient should take two or lower not more than two for example from meat because we don't want patient to develop any cardiac and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, atherosclerosis problem which may be uh, you know causes of the also hypertension so please go back and read, uh, go to this table and you know um, uh, understand the you know how much the patient just only you have to know the value how much the patient need to know from fruit vegetables from each different type of diet so here also we 
<coughs> we want to know about the pharmacology, the, the, our aim also to control hypertension and preventing complication through pharmacological therapy. So the pharmacological therapy, we have to know that we might, maybe we'll use pharmacological if, if the lifestyle modification, you know, uh, that not, the, did not work. In this case, we have to go through the pharmacological therapy. So the patient may, will ask to, to do the lifestyle modification and also we will ask, the, will ask him also to do, you know, to take some medication, for example, to decrease the peripheral resistance. As I said, the cardiac output multiplied by peripheral resistance, it is causes hypertension. So we reduce the car peripheral resistance, like we give, we ask the, we give some medication to reduce peripheral resistance, such as, you know, uh, carifedrolol. Uh, sometimes we give the patient amlodipine or whatever medication which is lead to the vasodilation. And also we ask, we give the patient, you know, diuretic. Sometimes we give the patient diuretic so to reduce the you know, um, uh, to, uh, to reduce uh, sodium intake and also to reduce the, uh, the you know, to reduce um, uh, the uh, hypervolemia. And also what you have to know, uh, the strength and rate of the myocardial contraction, we may give the patient some of the medication that we reduce the cardiac output. If we reduce the myocardial contraction, we reduce the cardiac uh, output, so such as atenolol, beta, any medication related to the beta blocker. So, but however, you have to understand that the first line of the therapy for the medication, it is, you know, uh, we give the thiazide as the first, you know, a treatment. So, we continue uh, about the pharmacological therapy. Usually, initial medication of the treatment is the thiazide diuretic. So, there is a fissure, for example, you can see this fissure. For example, it is the guidelines for management of patient with the hypertension. And you can go and read about this, the guideline, how the, we manage the patient. But, however, what you have to know, it's very important to understand that. This is the very important thing for, for me to understand that, you know, patient with the, uh, you know, initially it is treatment is, you know, the initial medication treatment is the side thiazide diuretic, such as hydrochlorothiazide, one of the medication is considered thiazide. Low doses are initiated and medication dose is increased gradually if the blood pressure does not reach to the target goal. For example, they will use, you know, uh, you know, for example, thiazide, uh, hydrochlorothiazide, we use, for example, 12, uh, you know, milligram. If the patient, if not work, we increase it to the 25 milligram. Additional medication are added, added if needed. Multiple medication may be needed to control blood pressure and for example, if, if the you know thiazide does not work, if you go to the this one, maybe we'll use a, a, you know different combination of the medication. For example, maybe we'll use you know uh, angiotensin. Uh, you know uh, we use for example thiazide. We use AC inhibitor. We use calcium channel blocker. As I said, for example, amlodipine. For example, uh, you know hydrochlorothiazide. Sometimes because some of patient you will you, you will see they are receiving three different type class of the hypertensive medication to just control their hypertension. And also their lifestyle change is initiated to control blood pressure must be maintained. Plus the medication, we have to ask the patient to do the lifestyle change. And also we ask the patient to, uh, you know, um, um, uh, for example, uh, we take some selective medication to promote, you know, adherence. So uh, sometimes this is we can do. Uh, so here we talk about the, you know, for example, the here we talk about the nursing issue the process is very important. We explain about this nursing process. It's very important, you know, to take history and assessment as one of them, you know, one of the step of the nursing process is to take history and assessment. You have to identify the history. You have to identify from the history. You will be able to identify the risk factor. You will be able to identify the, you know, the potential symptoms of the target organ damage from your history and assessment. You will see, you will be I already explained this, you will be able to identify if the patient have, you know, for example, any problem in the heart, any problem like myocardial infractions, like, you know, any uh, short of a breath, any, any, these signs and symptoms indicate some problem in the heart or any problem related to the, you know, um, uh, for example, you know, uh, any problem also related to the kidney or any problem related to the eyes. So it's very important to know the cardiovascular assessment you know, from the cardiovascular assessment, you will be able to identify if the patient have angina, myocardial infraction, or whatever. So we already, uh, you know, uh, explain, you know, uh, uh, any, many things about angina and myocardial infraction in, uh, you know, uh, our uh, previous lecture. Personal, social, and financial factor that influence contribution or treatment. It's very important to know some patient may be unable to take his medication because unable to buy this medication. And it's very important to understand this issue because some, some because some of the clients, 
some of the patient, you know, some of our country is the, the treatment is free, but in different country the medicated the treatment is not free sometimes. And also this is some, you know, uh, some of the nursing diagnosis that you have to know with the patient with who, have, who, who have hypertension. The patient may have uh, deficit knowledge regarding the relation between the treatment uh, regimen and the control of the disease. Sometimes the patient unable to understand the medication, the patient unable to understand how to control his blood pressure, uh, unable to understand, uh, you know, uh, what the diet, unable to understand how he, uh, you know, uh, how with the lifestyle modification. It, all of these things you will, should help the patient, especially in his diet modification, to understand and how to change his diet. And non-compliance with the therapeutic uh, regimen related to the side effect of the prescribed therapy. For example, the patient may be receiving, he, he's diabetic and he's hypertensive and he's, uh, you know, receiving a lot of medication. For example, you know, six or six, seven type of medication. So he's unable to, you know, to take his medication. Uh, you know, he's rejecting his medication. So it's very important to, you know, to understand, to teach this patient you know uh, how to take his medication and to avoid the side effect of this medication so this is collaborative problem and potential complication we already explained about before the some of the complication of hypertension like myocardial infarction heart failure you know this uh, cardiovascular stroke or uh, renal problems or retinal hemorrhage or whatever this is a repeated things like a complication or late manifestation and here you have to understand also uh, some uh, planning and goal of the care. You have to understand uh, of the disease and process and it is a treatment, uh, participation in the self care uh, program and absence of the complication. It's very important uh, planning your planning and your goal you should be able to understand the disease and process and this treatment you should be able to understand you uh, you know make the patient understand his disease and the treatment you should be able to ask the patient to participate in his self-care program ask the patient to you know to you know to uh, to reduce his complication and also the nursing intervention, you have to give the patient education. As I said, you know, lifestyle modification is one of the important edu health education and support adherence to the treatment, consultation, follow up. It's very important to follow the local health center or, or, the, or hospital so the patient will be able to, to, we will be able to know his blood pressure reading and will be able to see if he is, you know, uh, you know, his blood pressure control or not. So he will be, he will have less complication and will be able to change medication if the medication does not work with the patient, emphasize control rather than cure and reinforce and support lifestyle change, monitor and managing potential complication. Uh, also now we will talk about and this is the last things in this lecture we will talk about another things which is called hypertension crisis so this in hypertension crisis we have a patient with the high blood pressure so when the patient has high blood pressure they will classify it for example blood pressure greater than 180 and more than 120 it is considered hypertensive emergency and when we have a patient whose blood pressure more than 180 and over than 120 it is very important to, to reduce this blood pressure so this blood pressure normally it's called hypertensive emergency if it is you know it must be lower immediately to prevent damage to the target organ and associated with some problem like you know myocardial infraction or sometimes the patient will have hemorrhage and you will see that in ICU for example patient admitted because he has uh, you know high blood pressure and he has for example stroke or he have you know uh, you know uh, hemorrhagic stroke and also another classification which is called hypertensive urgency this is we you know the patient will have you know they will have high blood pressure with no evidence of the immediate or progressive target origin damage so for example you will have patient will have you know a nosebleed will have, he, he will have an anxiety or severe headache so so the differences between this and this it is differences in the organ damage here there is organ damage but here there is no organ damage so if we ask you to differentiate between these type you can differentiate up a big based in the organ damage however the management of hypertensive emergency it is due to reduce the blood pressure it is very important to know that blood pressure should be reduced uh, you know should be reduced 25 in the first hour and also reduce uh, in the six uh, within six hour you should be reduced uh, you know 160 to over 100 and the gradual reduction of the blood pressure should be meant, uh, should be the, uh, the goal and the medication maybe patient will receive uh, you know IV medication like vasodilation 
alkyl ether such as you know sodium nitroprusside or uh, you know nitroglycerin and uh, need for uh, very frequent monitoring of blood pressure and cardiovascular status you may need to check the blood pressure every 10 minutes for example and we for, or for 10 to 15 minutes and we have we need to check and we have to reduce the blood pressure and we have to do the far cardiovascular assessment put patient in ECGs because it is you know emergency uh, condition Uh, and also it's very important to know about you know uh, you know some of the consideration for the uh, gerontological consideration for example medication uh, regimen can be difficult to remember and uh, expense can be uh, can be challenging so for example this I explained for example they people older people they will never will be unable to uh, you know to remember their medication so it's very important to find a way to give their medication in simple way and sometimes they are unable to fund their medication I said how oh, oh, can work country the treatment is free and sometimes there is what is called manotherapy manotherapy there will be if appropriate maybe simplify the medication regimen to make it less expensive the manotherapy for example instead of giving three medicine uh, as three tablets you will give for example one medicine uh, you know and one tablet for example which for for long uh, you know uh, long acting I will give you an example for example you know um, there is one medication for the hypertension which is called you know exforge so exforge above is to consider, for example, I will give an, this is an example. X4 is combination of amlodipine, uh, hydrochloride, and, for example, AC inhibitor. So instead of give the patient AC inhibitor as tablet and uh, amlodipine as tablet and hydrochloride as tablet, we'll give them one tablet like called manotherapy. So and include the family, you know, in taking care of these patients. And this is some of the question. Can you, you know, uh, you know, this is some of the question. You have an exercise, and you can, uh, you know, you will you to exercise and to understand, and you will find the answer here. And some of the true false, you know, uh, you know, this and this is quiz is not related to the evaluation. This is just only, you know, uh, you know, uh, assessment. This is just only to uh, for you to practice. And thank you for understand uh, for the listening to the lecture. And if you have any question, please, you know, just uh, email me.